Okay, this one's a goodie. So, um, last video we went over all the upgrades that the 20E is going to get. Um, it was starting, obviously, we'd turboed it, uh, but yeah, we need to tune it and we need to give it those supporting mods. Um, most importantly is wiring up the new computer, which we have done. Um, I've tried to make this video a couple of times, uh, well not a couple of times, but I have filmed, um, I filmed along as I did it, but it's taken me a while. It's been, it's been, uh, caused me a bit of strife, but uh, we got there in the end. Uh, but basically when I'm trying to learn something and film it, the, the content's no good. So I think it's best to sort of go over what we've done um, now that it's finished. We're well, not finished, but you know, we're, we're getting there and um, yeah, we're ready. We're almost well, pretty much ready for a tune. So yeah, I'll, I'll go over everything that's been done to the car and then um, so that we have a little bit of content for today's video. Um, something I haven't done yet is set up a rev limiter on the old girl. So we'll do that. Um, I'm actually moving out of this place soon, so we could make a bit of noise maybe, see how we go. But yeah, we'll, um, we'll go over everything and, and I'll um, walk us through a little bit of how I did the wiring and or how I learnt to do wiring pretty much. Because um, yeah, it's not as bad as, as one might think, but there's a bit to get your head around. But yeah, we'll, we'll check it all over, eh? Righto, we'll go over the stuff I showed in the last video first. Um, so we've got our injectors in, you can't really see them. They thankfully actually just went straight in, factory replacement basically. Didn't have to change O-rings, fuel rail works as per, so that was super sick. I just um, we ended up making a new uh, injector loom anyway, but chucked the new plugs on and stuff. Um, and then on these single cam RBs, the uh, distributor is also a cam angle sensor, so we just chucked that 24 tooth, well, 24 hole uh, sort of trigger wheel in there. So it just gives us a little bit more reliable signal. Got an air filter on here. Obviously we don't want to be sucking in any uh, foreign nationals when we go to the beach. Um, and then we have gone to, uh, not a coil and plug, but uh, wasted spark set up, so it's hopefully give us a little bit more reliable spark. And that, of course, is run by this little four channel igniter, of which we're only using three. Um, yeah, because those are not smart coils, so you do need an igniter. And the little boost solenoid guy here. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, catch can. Rigged up a little catch can and. Uh, have got the RB30 cover on here. Um, I was gonna paint it, but I'm kind of vibing the, the weathered race car look. Um, there's actually not too much wiring going on in here, but it still looks busy as, so what can you do, eh? But yeah, that's that's the bay, and I'm, I'm really happy with how it's looking. And then I guess that brings us to the most important part is our ECU and loom. Um, so, what we originally tried to do was uh, set the well, wire the, the ECU in with the, with the factory loom. Um, and that's just a matter of looking at your factory pin out. You find that on the internet pretty easy of, you know, which wire does what in the, in the factory loom. And then, you know, finding the corresponding pin on the, on the new computer and setting it up. Um, we did actually get the car to run, um, but it wasn't running well and uh, I, that, that only took a couple of days, but with the factory loom, you kind of don't know where your power is coming from. The ground system is a bit weird. And I think the most important thing is like um, factory computers, or it obviously depends what car and, and what aftermarket computer you're going to use. But, you know, sometimes you'll be, the ECU will be wanting to receive a ground signal or it not not receive a ground signal sorry um it'll be you know to trigger something it'll ground it or maybe in some cases it'll send a positive signal um and there's just a bunch of discrepancies like that that are going to affect whether you can use your factory loom or not um obviously plug and plays for rbs work so you can but i found it easier to get my head around if i just started again um i'll chuck in a couple of clips probably um of the process but yeah, I just decided, no, nah, it's better to start again. I don't really have any wiring experience. I've done gauges and stuff like that before, but my mate was helping me out with trying to get it to work with the factory factory loom, and then I sort of started to get my head around it, but 
basically what I did was I just cut every plug off every sensor and every output so you really only have two things on a motor you have a sensor to tell the ECU something or you have an output whether that be an idle control valve your injectors your spark your boost solenoid those are all outputs sensors would be uh, throttle position cam angle uh, intake air temp that sort of thing so you've you got your ins and you got your outs um, and it seems super overwhelming what it did to me anyway but I just cut the factory loom apart and isolated every plug and found out where that plug whether it needed power whether it needed ground whether it needed a signal and just do it one by one and it makes it a whole lot simpler it definitely still took me a lot of time and, and a lot of frustration um, but breaking it down like that makes it a lot a lot easier to get your head around um, and also what I did was I drew myself a um, a diagram so I ended up changing a couple of things on here but it made it easier to map out on here first so that you're not trying to do it all in your head you can really plan out everything um, so that was super helpful um, basically I just yeah all your signals whether they're in or out and then you need a ground system and you need a power system for my power system I just took a wire from the starter to this little fuse box guy here um, and then I've got that's all 12 volts so then I've got coils idle control injectors um, power in the ECU uh, a couple other things maybe on there and that's all triggered by a relay so the relay gets a signal from um, actually this wire somewhere down there all listens will have them that just gives you 12 volt switch so that triggers the relay and powers the whole system um, I actually took the loom through under there so we don't have anything over this side now just because I didn't want to be running into trouble with um, with rubbing the loom and stuff obviously the car is looking super testing spec right now but I did drive it down to the servo and I didn't want to be crashing into shit but yeah so my loom comes under the dash and right now we're just sitting right there um so that'll go in the glove box it's not perfect it really isn't but i'm pretty happy with it first it'll go and then we got just a few little things off here like the wideband controller and stuff i have to sort of finalize but yeah so this ecu is obviously as on the sticker Kiwi EFI K88, but it's based on a thing called a speedy, yeah, Speedwino drop bear. Sounds a little bit ridiculous, um, but it's kind of like a home built mega squirt, basically. A lot of people talk a lot of shit. Um, most of the problems people have with them is just hardware stuff because they are sort of DIY, so if you mess anything up, well, there's a lot left for you to mess up, kind of thing. Um, but I didn't want to spend, you know, three grand on a computer for a motor that cost a box of piss. And um, it's been a real good learning experience. So that means we're using Tuner Studio. Um, it's the same software you use to tune Mega Squirt ECUs. Um, I won't go into everything I did to get it running. If you're doing a similar thing and you want to ask me any questions, just um, hit me up on Instagram or something. But yeah, there's a bunch of shit you obviously need to sort out so the car can actually start. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and fire up, eh? That's not set up yet, so we're not about to blow our shit. Do a bit of a walk around while she warms up and then we'll get into that limiter, eh?
here, so probably gonna be a little steamy. So yeah, like I said, we're gonna um, set up a rev limiter. Um, I think, what are we at now? Uh, we go engine protection, uh, rev limiters, and then, look, I don't know what I'm doing, so we're just having a bit of a play here, but, um, but yeah, get into it. Put a little bit of a miss there on idle, but we're gonna get a proper tune actually, so, won't worry about that for now. Okay, we'll go with six. I will try five and a half to start with, and then six on the hard cut. Um, just give that a go. We'll set it a little lower so I don't have to rev the shit out of it and then if I like the sound I'll bump it up a bit. fun um i probably need to do a bit of um learning so i actually know what i'm up to i have no idea how to set up a rev limiter <laughs> but um but yeah we'll play have a little bit more of a play around with that i want a, a little bit more a little bit more bang and a little bit more pop but um 
yeah that was sweet so thanks for watching uh next video will hopefully be a tune um it's not really too much a few more senses i'm gonna put an iat and an oil pressure in um but yeah hopefully get into that soon see you next time